So uh, at the end of the last lecture yesterday, we were talking about how to switch from equivalences. We have extensively talked about uh, uh, notions of program equivalence and the refinement in the first lectures to metrics. And, uh, you know, we said that, uh, you know, this amount to go from an object like uh, a relation on a set uh, to a function which uh, assigned, let's say, to any pair of uh, points in a set uh, X, uh, an element of the interval zero plus infinity. And this element uh, of the interval is meant to uh, stand for the, for the actual distance between these uh, two um, points, uh, these two programs, if we talk about programs. And we were starting to look at how uh, the key concepts of uh, um, compatibility and adequacy uh, could be um, uh, spelled out uh, in this uh, new setting. So about compatibility, uh, we were saying that, uh, well, uh, the fact that uh, uh, such a metric mu is compatible can be spelled out by saying that the distance between two uh, programs EF must be greater or equal than the least upper bound over all context of the distance between uh, uh, the context field with the first program and the context field with the second program. And you know, this uh, uh, really um, is uh, uh, the natural way to um, general, generalize the notion of uh, um, a compatible relation to a more quantitative setting. Uh, because, first of all, you take into account uh, uh, all contexts and you, you put yourself in the worst case, namely, uh, you consider the the contexts uh, as separators of uh, um, terms, uh, like uh, in the relational case, uh, and consider the, the context which is able to separate uh, um, uh, the two programs E and F the most. And that's uh, uh, what you want to take into account when you um, uh, uh, compute the distance between E and F. Uh, you don't want to be too optimistic. And implicitly, you are taking uh, into account of all um, of all uh, all the context. But how about uh, adequacy? If you, if you remember, in adequacy, we were saying that uh, in case of relations, just to remind you that uh, if two programs uh, are um, of the type of rule uh, are in relation, then their operation semantics must be exactly the same. Um, this coupled with compatibility uh, gave uh, um, the, the notion of an acceptable uh, notion of equivalence or refinement uh, between programs, uh, as we argued, and we should do more or less the same for metrics. That is like a, a problem, which is actually not really a problem. Um, the fact is that, uh, you know, up to now, for very good reasons, we have worked with uh, uh, languages uh, with only uh, Booleans as the uh, underlying ground type. Um, and, you know, once we start to talk about the metrics, it makes a lot of sense to also consider languages with uh, um, ground types like uh, natural numbers, real numbers, and so in particular, uh, types of, in, for which uh, um, a notion of distance between elements of this type makes uh, more sense. And for example, we can uh, um, um, take, uh, um, uh, we can consider an extension of all the calculi we, uh, we have presented so far with uh, uh, the type of natural numbers. Uh, this poses absolutely no problem, neither at the level of the static semantics, no nor at the level of the dynamic semantics, absolutely. And uh, the notion of adequacy, of course, uh, must be in, in kind of uh, um, uh, uh, modified uh, even at the level of the relational, of the relational world, uh, uh, taking into account also natural numbers. But how about metrics? Well, now that we have natural numbers, right? We 
can see that going to relations uh, and uh, sorry, going to metrics and reformulating what uh, ATECOS means at the level of metrics is possible. And it, uh, it is quite, uh, mm, you know, there is a uh, satisfactory way to do it, uh, namely imposing that the distance between two programs of type NAT uh, E and F, okay, must be greater. And again, there is this analogy between implication at the level of the relations and a greater or equal at the level of um, metrics uh, between the operational semantics of E minus the operational semantics of F. Because now the operational semantics of E and F are numbers. Okay? They can be arbitrarily large. You know, and if you have two programs that produce very different numbers, of course, you know, they must be considered as very far away from each other. While if they produce very you know, close uh, natural numbers, uh, they, they work uh, um, uh, you know, they, they, they can be put close to each other. If you think about the example we saw in the first lecture about computing the integral and you replace the natural now, the type of natural numbers with the type of real numbers, well, this is more or less, you realize that this is more or less what the, the community of numerical analysis do. Uh, they measure how um, good uh, a numerical algorithm for computing the integral is uh, uh, by something like this metric. And they compute how far the actual um, result of uh, um, integrating uh, a function numerically is from the true integral of the same function. Of course, then there are other issues, uh, there are multiple issues uh, coming from example, uh, coming for example from the uh, representation of real numbers by the floating point numbers, by approximation errors done at you know, various points around the computation. Uh, but you see that, you know, we are getting closer to something, uh, to something like that. So now we can say that, uh, you know, the, ana the analogous to the notion of compatibility and the notion of adequacy are this one and this one. So far, so good. Very good. It seems nice, isn't it? But there is a point, there is a problem, actually. There is a um, problem which, uh, uh, you know, maybe some of you have already, <laughs> have already spotted. If you put, if you impose at the same time compatibility and adequacy, the kind of metrics on programs you can obtain, well, is very poor. Let me uh, give me let me give you a result about it. It's very out as a proposition following the notes. Given two programs. EF of type NAT. Such that The semantics of E is different from the semantics of F. And an adequate and compatible metric. You know, but we have that. Actual distance between E and F is infinity. Okay. The point is that you know, as soon as there is a little difference, as soon as there is a little observable difference between two programs of type uh, NAT, well, it's relatively easy to just amplify this difference uh, uh, as much as you as much as you like. Why? Because, of course, you can, for example, play with the if and else, right? Uh, you can check whether the two programs are different, and uh, you can get contexts 
which uh, uh, in case uh, uh, the two, in, two inputs of uh, say, uh, uh, one input is uh, um, different from a certain contact uh, 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 constant uh, returns a very small number and otherwise a very big number. And uh, of course, there are contexts which those so in such a way that the difference between the small number and the big number is uh, kind of uh, uh, arbitrarily large. But then you have one, one can claim that you are playing dirty with the, with the if and else, right? Which is uh, okay, uh, possible. Uh, but in the proof of this uh, proposition, do a sketch. We rather want to use uh, uh, very simple constructs uh, when building uh, separating contexts. In particular, let's build uh, separating contexts as follows. Let's put C0, like just a uh, uh, context which returns zero and doesn't even look at the whole, at the argument, while Cn. Is defined in terms of C n minus one, so inductively, and it does as follows. It proceeds as follows. It evaluates the argument, okay. and uh, what it does with the result is to sum it. Uh, to sum it. Uh, what you get in as n minus one. Where, however, x is filled. And what you return then is just one. So what is a uh, 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 context, uh, uh, context do uh, is to uh, uh, take a look at. Uh, in the case of CN, it takes the argument, okay. it computes its value, okay. then it feeds uh, um, uh, this value in CN minus one, and it sums it uh, to X itself, okay. getting Y. So by just using morally very basic uh, uh, operations of the language, in particular, without using the if and else, and without using uh, Arithmetical operations, uh, uh, except uh, sum, uh, we are uh, uh, getting. Uh, we, are, we are able to build uh, context in such, uh, such that the semantics of the sum of the operational semantics of C N. Is equal to n times the operation is minus so, of e. This means that uh, you see mu of EF, which must be uh, treated or equal for obvious reasons. This one, this one, this is the definition of liquidity. Well, this is nothing more than sup n n times e minus n times f. And well, you can immediately realize that this is possible because we take the sup of all natural numbers. So, <sighs> Even if you just used the uh, uh, very basic constructs of your language, in particular just the addition, and you don't use the, uh, the if and else, you can separate very easily any two pairs of programs uh, which are, uh, uh, which ex exhibit a little difference. And so, in a sense, uh, uh, um, you know, sticking to um, program metrics which are at the same time adequate and um, Compatible means that uh, um, you are bound to uh, 
consider uh, metrics which trivialize, which are actually relations, because the only two possible outcomes are zero or infinity at invariant. All um, compatible and uh, adequate program metrics trivialized. Meaning that U e at is either zero or plus infinity. This is not an interval, this is a set with two elements. This is what I mean. So, so is the, does this mean that uh, we are kind of uh, lost, uh, that we cannot do anything? Not at all, but we kind of need to change the playground a little bit. Um, if you take a look at uh, if you take a look at how these um, uh, contexts uh, are defined, uh, you immediately realize uh, that uh, um, you know you really need to play dirty in one respect if you want to build this uh, build this uh, context. In particular, you need uh, to do uh, to do x twice. You need to sum x with something that depends on x. So if, if indeed uh, this allows you to amplify differences, uh, even if you just use um, functions like sum, which uh, in technical terms are said to be one of skits, and so but they cannot amplify differences too much. So in other words, uh, we are Bound, uh, we really need to take care of uh, uh, how contexts, uh, how the environment views uh, uh, its argument, and not just uh, uh, and not just uh, uh, whether the, the, the context uh, uh, can separate it or not. In particular, you need to take into account how much <laughs> the uh, the actual context uh, uh, use uh, uh, its argument. In this case, for example, um, uh, CN uses its argument n times, or uh, better, n minus one times. Uh, why? Because uh, CN, uh, you can just see it by, by induction. C0 uses it uh, zero times, yeah, n times. And CN uses uh, it one plus the number of times it is used by CN minus one. Uh, so it is crucial to take this into account. And if you are, you know, familiar with uh, 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 linear logic, if you have heard of linear logic, maybe uh, 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 Abel has already, uh, you know, rang in, 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 uh, in your head, and uh, you, could, uh, you could have realized that uh, there is something reminiscent of linear logic going here, and you will see that uh, that's exactly the case. Um, actually, the, the, the paradigm shift uh, is the following one. We cannot require compatibility to be spelled out as we hinted, but we need to be more, more careful. Okay. Um, oh, compatibility. must be spelled out taking sensitivities in namely by uh, saying that uh, yes you want uh, your um, 
distance between E and F to be somehow related uh, to the distance uh, between CE and CF. But uh, you can take advantage of uh, a factor called a sensitivity. This is a sensitivity. Namely, a real number. which in a sense is related to how much C can use its argument. Okay. This measures how much C uses, uh, uses its argument. If C, like the context C1, C2, Cn we were building, use uh, its argument many times, well, this can be kind of uh, 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 taken into account uh, in the notion of compatibility itself. Okay. In other words, uh, as we were saying the first day, the context starts to, start to matter. The way the context uh, behave uh, starts to matter in a um, crucial way. Uh, particularly, you take into account how many times uh, the context use, uh, uh, uses uh, its, uh, its output. And then, you know, uh, where do sensitivities come from? <laughs> how can we compute uh, how much as the context uses uh, its argument? Uh, well, uh, you can do it uh, by, as I already hinted, uh, uh, taking inspiration from um, linear logic. Uh, in particular, we can, we can refine the kind of calculi we uh, introduced in the first three lectures. Uh, um, with linear constraints. So from, uh, let's say, um, calculi like uh, lambda st, lambda mu, lambda prop, you can go to uh, calculi like fst, uh, f prop, and uh, this f is uh, uh, spelled, uh, you know, uh, we have decided to call all this language F because this is very much inspired by the work on fuzz by Reed and Pierce. This is actually a work uh, um, in which uh, uh, linear types uh, have uh, been used uh, to uh, compute the sensitivity of functions uh, for the purpose of uh, then uh, exploiting this information in the realm of differential privacy. Um, Marco, for example, has uh, worked a lot uh, uh, around these lines. Um, and uh, yes, I think it's uh, quite uh, useful to take a look at uh, how these, uh, these languages uh, work and how um, a notion of metric can be defined uh, in this language in a very nice and uh, uh, satisfactory way. Okay, so let's take a look at these, these languages. Of course, we don't have time to going to all the little details that we are at the last lecture, which still have just a, a slightly less than one hour. But let me highlight the most uh, interesting aspects uh, of these languages. In particular, what happens at the level of types, first of all? The level of types, you have exactly what you had uh, in the uh, calculi uh, we know uh, uh, already. You also consider a uh, ground type of real numbers. Uh, and, and then you have new type constructs uh, very much inspired by linear logic, the so called tensor product and uh, linear algorithm. On top of it, you also have a, a type, again, very much inspired by linear logic, which is the so called bank type. And uh, the the idea behind these types uh, uh, are the following ones. So this is the, a type of functions, very closely related to the usual arrow, but contrary to the, what happens in the usual arrow, these functions can use uh, um, uh, their arguments just once. So if 
if you type uh, uh, um, a term like lambda x uh, e, uh, we type uh, um, sigma linear arrow tau, well, it means that e uses x just once. And uh, nothing in particular, no more than once. So, of course, not so many lambda abstractions have this property. So, you want to recover the possibility of uh, using uh, arguments uh, more than once. And that's it. Uh, this is like a, a version of uh, sigma in which. Uh, um, the term, the underlying value, can be used uh, as times. So, in calculi like f, uh, everything can be used just once, except uh, when uh, this something is placed uh, uh, inside the uh, um, type construct uh, of the form of bang uh, sigma. In this particular case, it becomes, uh, well, uh, copyable. It can uh, be copied uh, how many times? Not arbitrarily many times, as many times. So in particular, if S, remember, S is a sensitivity, um, is, uh, well, for example, three, well, this uh, uh, term can be um, copied uh, three times. S can be infinite, and in this case, you copy the uh, underlying value as many times as you like. And uh, how about the, the tensor? Well, the tensor is like a pair, uh, but uh, um, the two components of the pair cannot share um, any, uh, any variable. Okay? So this is like the type of pairs. In which the two components are independent. Okay, so this is like what uh, the most important, uh, mm, uh, the most important. These are the most important aspects of the. Of the of the calculus, because then uh, if you understand what I what I've just said, uh, well, at the level of values, uh, nothing so deep happens. You have the usual values plus uh, uh, this uh, tensor pairs, which are okay, syntactically different than usual pairs. But and then you can mark uh, any value to be uh, duplicable. And once you when you mark uh, any value to be duplicable, you do so without mentioning the sensitivity. This comes only at the level of, um, comes up only at the level of uh, um, uh, uh, only at the level of times. Now, how about computations? Well, uh, computations, yes, as there, are, we are, there are questions. Maybe. Yes, as we are close to types still, uh, there's a question about exclamation mark S. Is it yes. a controlled contraction? Uh, Sorry, say it again. Is it a is controlled it? contraction? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I will uh, uh, mention the underlying, uh, I will give some um, uh, typing rules uh, very, uh, very soon. Not all of them, of course, but I will just uh, uh, sketch some, um, some of them. Uh, and that in particular, uh, I would mention about this control contraction and how it is happening. Mm -hmm. Just a couple of minutes and I'll be there. Okay, so about computations, what we can say is that, uh, well, uh, you build at least two new constructs. Um, in particular, you, you want to be able to unpack a value in the form, uh, sorry, uh, a value uh, of a bank type of an exclamation mark type and use it. And you also want to be able to uh, consider uh, a value B as a tensor of two components 
and use the feature plan in the underlying application. Okay, so uh, let me uh, just uh, uh, look at the, uh, the uh, static semantics. Okay, and in doing so, I will uh, um, talk about these aspects, uh, uh, aspects related to uh, controlled construction. Okay, so for example, uh, whenever you want to form um, a pair of values uh, B tensor W, you want to type uh, it, of course, uh, um, like, like that. And uh, this means that uh, you want to type uh, W and B respectively sorry but usually you know when you type pairs in calculating like the simply type lambda calculus the two environments right here and here are the same environment but here is different it is uh, gamma here and delta here but what is gamma and what is delta first of all i list over that and uh, these are not really the same kind of environments uh, we use uh, in, uh, uh, in the city types and the values. Uh, these are environments which um, kind of uh, um, consider um, sensitivities that are like uh, the keep tracks of sensitivity. So, for example, one such uh, uh, environment gamma can be in the form X. One S one sigma one until X N S N sigma N. So rather than just having uh, uh, pairs in the form variable type as usual in type environments, we also uh, mention explicitly a sensitivity, and the sensitivity keeps track of uh, how many times. This uh, um, variable is used uh, inside the value or inside the computation. And the same thing, um, of course, uh, uh, needs to work for, for, for delta. So uh, delta and uh, gamma uh, uh, can be in this form, but they can be different. Okay. Uh, and that's it. You don't just put gamma or delta here, but what you uh, put in the conclusion are the sum. And summing environments means uh, summing uh, pointwise the sensitivities of each variable. Of course, if one variable occurs just in one of the two um, environments and not on the other one, you keep it as it is. But if it uh, occurs in both components, you sum the sensitivities. And this way, you count the um, number of uh, um, the number of times uh, uh, variables are used, the uh, arguments are used uh, appropriately. And that's the key, uh, the key uh, of, the, of the type system. Uh, for example, the same, exactly the same thing, I mentioned it just quickly, is also done at the level of uh, applications. And here you have a computation. Uh, is this the end of the story? Absolutely not. Uh, there is another, uh, a, of course, there are many other rules. Uh, you can take a look at the, um, uh, at, the, at the notes, at the lecture notes. Let me just mention a couple of more uh, rules, which the uh, first one is the one about uh, lambda abstractions. Whenever you form a lambda abstraction, you do it uh, as usual, but you need to be sure that the underlying sensitivity is one. Why? Well, because uh, you type uh, the, the uh, lambda abstraction with a linear type, with a linear arrow, basically. 
uh, which means that the argument of type C1 must be used exactly once. Uh, on the other hand, uh, whenever you want to um, type uh, bank V, and of course you would like to bank to type it uh, as follows, uh, like uh, bank S uh, sigma. Well, of course you want to type V, type sigma. But you need to do, to do something more. You know, if you mark V as something which can be duplicated S times, and V contains some free variables in gamma, each of them are marked with a sensitivity, all these sensitivities must be multiplied by S. So this operation of um, multiplying sensitivity by S corresponds to multiply all the sensitivities in gamma by S. And of course, this raises the issue of what it means to multiply an infinite uh, sensitivity by zero or a zero sensitivity by infinity. Um, in the notes, you find all the details. I, um, unfortunately, I don't have the details. Uh, I don't have time to, to take a look at uh, uh, these details. Um, uh, there are different ways to do it, uh, to solve these kind of uh, critical uh, uh, cases. Uh, kind of uh, unique cases, um, all of them having their pros and cons. And we follow one of them uh, in the notes, but all, also like um, motivating our, our choice quite, uh, uh, quite well. Okay, so in this way, you have, uh, we have kind of introduced a calculus in which sensitivities are taken into account, I would say, rather carefully. Uh, is there any question? Thomas. Uh, I there's a, maybe a question if uh, after bank do we have to use it exactly many as times or uh, at most as times? Uh, the second <laughs> at most at mm -hmm. times. So. Um, uh, there is like a form of implicit, implicit uh, uh, weakening at the level of sensitivities, which allows you to um, say that uh, uh, when you mark a variable with sensitivity S, it, what it means is that you lose uh, the underlying variable at most S times. This is an interesting question. You don't insist too much about the exactness. What it matters is that you don't use it too much. Okay, and uh, what is nice about all this uh, is that, uh, well, um, again, uh, we have uh, kept the language not so different from uh, uh, the ones we have, uh, uh, the, one, the ones we have uh, introduced in the first three lectures. So giving, for example, the dynamic semantics to language is uh, not at all complicated. I just want to, uh, for the sake of, uh, 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 you know, uh, keep, uh, 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 all being said, contained, uh, uh, but simple. I just want to give you a couple of examples of, of semantic rules just to stimulate your intuition. Um, okay, so, for example, the there is solved by a double substitution. As you might expect. 
and the left bank. Solved by just one simple, simple substitution. Okay. And the rest of uh, the development is very much the same as. Uh, okay, now we are ready. Uh, since we have defined the calculus which keeps the of sensitivities. Uh, uh, in a rather pleasant and uh, simple way, uh, we are ready to at least uh, try to extend uh, uh, the notion of uh, the notions of uh, uh, generalize the notion of equivalences uh, uh, like uh, logical uh, equivalence, uh, applicative uh, by similarity, even contextual equivalence, or even denotational equivalence um, to, uh, to this calculus. At the same time, uh, making them quantitative, okay? And the fact that we want to make them quantitative to make them uh, uh, closer to metrics uh, means that we need to kind of change a little bit uh, the relational calculus. If you remember, the relational calculus was our way uh, of uh, dealing in a compact uh, um, and uh, very elegant, I would say, uh, way. Uh, about uh, the meta theory of uh, of uh, obligations of uh, determinations. So we need something called the quantitative uh, uh, relational calculus. Which is, uh, yeah, the generalization of uh, uh, the relational calculus to uh, to metrics. Actually, what we have uh, uh, what we have done uh, to keep the thing as close as possible to the relational calculus, as we introduced it in the first part of the course, was to uh, spell um, um, spell uh, distances out as uh, relations. So a distance uh, mu, which I remember, is uh, function pairs. Uh, of elements uh, from x, y to zero infinity, well, it becomes a ternary equation. So, a subset of the Cartesian product of uh, zero infinity, first component, x, second component, y. Um, Third component. And uh, what does it mean to go from one to the other? Well, um, we starting from new, you can get uh, uh, M um, by saying that uh, M A X Y holds uh, if and only if A is an upper bound on the actual distance of uh, X and Y. So M is a ternary relation. The first component is anything which is actually uh, higher or equal, uh, greater or equal uh, to the actual distance between uh, X and Y. This way, you can also go from um, uh, ternary relations uh, to distances uh, by saying that. Uh, so this is like a way if you like to go from you new. Know, R. Uh, to M, I'm sorry. While going from M to U is possible by just stipulating that uh, the new you need is just the inf of all the A's of that M A. And the correspondence uh, uh, is uh, tight uh, once you um, um, restrict it to ternary relations which are uh, uh, monotone and continuous uh, in the first argument. This way, the two definitions are uh, just uh, one. Uh, um, 
the same as the other modulo this uh, uh, double translation okay wonderful so this means that uh, we can talk about the distances by just talking about ternary relations and well once you realize it you can try to <laughs> spell all the definitions uh, we already know for example the definition of uh, well a closed term relation an open term uh, uh, relation uh, the relation composition the relation substitution the open extension the, uh, the substitutive extension you know in, in exactly the same way uh, we, we did uh, in the case of relations in many cases the definitions are just uh, you know the extensions are just uh, absolutely natural but there are some of them which deserve to be uh, discussed for example when you uh, want to uh, generalize the relational calculus uh, to the ternary case in such a way that you can take into account uh, distances and you want to uh, compose compose two uh, such ternary relation m and n well you need to kind of understand what happens to the detector distance and you know composing the relation if you remember, if you remember, well, it is a key ingredient of the definition of transitivity of relations. While for distances, well, uh, it becomes uh, a key ingredient in the definition of in the, in the in, you know in, in the, um, the statement of um, tri so called triangular inequality. Um, triangular inequality can be stated as uh, by reference to the uh, uh, the relation composition and then you know how is it that, how is it defined well we can say that uh, in a certain uh, environment gamma now we are talking of course of, of uh, this new calculus uh, uh, c is a um, um, an upper bound uh, between uh, the distance uh, Post distance uh, sigma. when two things hold you want uh, a to be an upper bound between b and g, certain g, and you want uh, b to be an upper bound in the sense of n. G of but then you know there must be a relation between a b and c and that's the key this is where the addition between sensitivities or if you like between distances comes on comes up if you need to see if uh, greater or equal a plus b if you do so can spell the axiom of uh, um, so called uh, triangular inequality axiom by way of relational composition, mimicking exactly what we did uh, when uh, talking about uh, um, uh, transitivity in the relational case. And uh, well, uh, you can you know, go on and on and define the notion of open extension of closed extension. Again, this is all pretty natural. Uh, I just want to uh, give one of these notions, particularly the notion of uh, uh, substitution. If you remember um, the notion of substitutions between relation, was this one. Remember, it was uh, the uh, exactly the the way we would uh, uh, spell out uh, compatibility for example we said that uh, a relation is compatible if we are this is subset of r or alternatively if r minus r but and a notion of uh, uh, the notion of uh, uh, substitutive relation uh, can be spelled out in this way by saying that r r is a subset of r we argued that it is quite a natural and, and simple and compact um, way of uh, uh, defining two notions uh, 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 in the case of the relational calculus. But uh, uh, what happens?
is here. What happens uh, at the level of uh, 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 at the level of matrix? Uh, is the substitution between two uh, matrix and and them uh, defined exactly the same way, or uh, should uh, should we be a bit more careful? Actually, we need to be a bit more careful, but I think that uh, understanding uh, how things go this way uh, is um, uh, understanding how the thing, this definition is stated the way it is, uh, is quite enlightening. And I, I want to tell you about that. So we want to define now uh, M and looks like. And uh, if you remember what the uh, what you hope to get as a conclusion, uh, even in the case of the relations, uh, is the following: we want to talk about uh, the substitution of when certain values take the place of x and b. At a certain type down. Normally, you put these two things just in relation, okay? In uh, in, in particular, in the uh, uh, relation R substituted S, but here we are of course defining M substituted N, and this means that there is a third <laughs> ingredient, namely an upper bound to the distance, okay. and you want to do it. Uh, being based on what? Being based uh, on, first of all, the distance measured on uh, M between E and F, which is smaller than equal to A. Of course, there is this there is these variables, each of them with a sensitivity. And that's the key. And on top of it, uh, um, you also have uh, that uh, um, uh, well, um, n uh, tells you that the distances between each of the, the values in P and each of the values in W is uh, upper bounded by certain and then you know <laughs> as usual exactly as in the case of the uh, 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 um, relation composition you want to understand what the relation between c a and the vector b is what do you want to mix uh, how do you want to mix them okay and the natural thing to do is to say well C must be big enough to take into account of both well, the actual distance A between E and F, and that's there. Then you take uh, into account of the sum of the Bs. Remember, in B is a vector, uh, so you just take all the Bs in the And that's it. But there is one missing thing you can you, you have probably spotted it already, and which is the, the sensitivities. Okay, uh, you cannot just forget about the sensitivities along the way. Okay, you need to take it, them into account here by just uh, saying that B is not an upper bound. To, uh, the distance between uh, uh, as a vector between uh, vector B and vector W, but uh, you need to scale this distance by way of the vector S. So the vector S, the vector of, uh, of the sensitivities, uh, serves as a scaling factor for the distances coming from uh, uh, the values uh, vector B and vector W. So, you know, 
test the thing. <laughs> Whenever you do, for example, a substitution of related values inside uh, uh, related computations, uh, you know, these substitutions happen along the some uh, variables, each of them has a sensitivity, and sensitivity must be taken into account. Moreover, uh, the resulting uh, uh, distance, C, uh, must take into account of uh, all of that, of the starting uh, uh, distance, the one in the computations, and of the distances coming from the substitution values. And you know, that's, uh, that's nice. Uh, it goes this way if you define the notion of uh, substitution uh, between uh, uh, ternary relations between notions of program distances in this way, uh, you can define compatibility um, as usual. So, compatibility becomes just as usual. So exactly the same kind of actions we used uh, we used in the pure limitation of this. Okay, wonderful. So um, um, that's it, <laughs> basically. Once you have the um, the relational calculus, uh, it's uh, um, very natural to take all well, what we have done in the uh, relational case and try to um, generalize it uh, um, to, to matrix. And actually, this works uh, extremely well, uh, both in the case of uh, contextual equivalence. Which is still the largest compatible and other way distance from the distance. Actually. Doesn't make sense to call it in the same equivalence because it's called the distance. Right? So, so this one is and uh, same thing can be from the logic distance. Okay. And just for the sake of um, you know, keeping uh, something slightly more concrete than uh, what we have seen uh, in the last uh, 10 minutes, which was quite abstract and uh, uh, formulated in the language of the relational calculus, let me tell you how the logical distance uh, uh, for uh, F. Uh, uh, S D is defined. So let us put F how logical distance. So the like the metric counterpart to logical relations of the model. Can be defined. Let's in particular take a look at some of the clauses. So, um, 
suppose, for example, you want to um, you know, compare two values uh, of type linear. Suppose that you want uh, to compare one uh, real number A and one real number B, and uh, you want to do so by way of a ternary relation. Okay? Let's call it. Uh, like that following the, the noise, which of course has a, a, an additional parameter C, which stands for the actual distance between A and B. What is your guess? How should it be if Holds only if and only if the C is an upper bound of the actual distance, Euclidean distance between A and B. This is quite, uh, quite easy. Now, what happens if you want to compare two pairs, in particular two uh, uh, pairs in the form U tensor B? And uh, uh, W tensor Z, which of course has sigma tensor. Well, you of course want to assume that uh, the distance uh, between U and W sigma is A. You want to assume that the distance between uh, V and Z uh, is B, but you also want to tell me <laughs> how the distance C you get here relates to A and B. And it is very natural. Um, if you take a look at what we have done, <laughs> is to uh, ask that C is greater than A plus B. And let's now come to the um, the case of uh, uh, the case of the, the arrows, because you know, the log logical relations, uh, the nice uh, and the enlightening case is always the, the one of the of the arrows. This tells uh, this tells you how uh, the logical relations uh, handle higher types, which are like the, the most interesting aspects of this kind of languages. The kind of languages we are using. So suppose that you want to. Um, Compare two lambda abstractions, lambda xd and lambda xf, as uh, types of sigma arrow tau. And, you know, in the spirit of logical relation, well, um, this uh, uh, requires, uh, you know, checking what happens the distance uh, that you get uh, uh, feeding d. E left hand side with a value B and feeding F with uh, uh, um, uh, value uh, W. So of course of the type tau when uh, of course B is equated to the to the W to the, the type um, sigma but again <laughs> What happens to the actual distances? Okay, so you, you want to have these two um, um, these two um, uh, these two um, functions to be at a certain distance a. You want uh, these two the computations computational resulting from the substitution of e and w to the two bodies here we have c and uh, here we have e of course and look c again must be greater than a plus b but look the c here is the one on the 
right hand side of the double integration. So if you want, for example, that lambda xe and lambda xf are at a distance of two, you need to uh, uh, check uh, all these, of course, uh, for all the you know, which are at a certain distance b, resulting at a distance c, which uh, is uh, the sum at, uh, at least uh, of a and b. So the fact that you want to um, take into account uh, all possible pairs of related values E W means uh, 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 that uh, all possible and very and possibly very big uh, uh, distance P can be taken into account here. Must be taken into account here, and. Uh, um, of course, this can be somehow discounted uh, with this inequality. You can get some of it back in C. And A, A must be able to, uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, fill the gap between B and C to be big enough um, to fill the gap. OK. So this way, you get uh, um, uh, like a metric counterpart of logical relations. By the way, this is not that good to ask at all. This was already in the uh, recent years paper because one of the main, uh, um, say, uh, theoretical uh, tools that the recent peers used uh, in uh, in their uh, um, original paper to prove uh, their analysis of uh, sensitivity of algorithms correct. Um, and of course, uh, uh, we realize that uh, it's like the, nothing more than a quantitative uh, counterpart uh, of uh, uh, ordinary logical relations. Um, and I want to just spend uh, uh, a little time talking about the, uh, uh, the notational side of the story. So um, if you remember, we were you know, multiple times talking about the notational equality uh, between uh, uh, terms of the simplified lambda calculus as a way to define uh, term relations. So two terms uh, are considered as uh, equivalent if the denotation is the same. And uh, this seems to be quite uh, I mean, intrinsically related to um, uh, relational and qualitative uh, reasoning. Because remember, we were saying that E and F are the notation equal if notational semantics. So E is the same as the notational semantics. What if we want to, as we are doing, uh, extract some information about how far away E and F uh, are. But if you interpret E and F in uh, just as sets, this is of course impossible. Um, interpreting the E and F as uh, elements uh, of uh, subset uh, leaves you with just a purely qualitative information, namely uh, some information which allows you to compare the denotation with the denotation of another term. And uh, the result of the comparison is just uh, when uh, either the two are the same or they are not. Um, in, on the other hand, you can just change it, you can just uh, enrich the denotational interpretation, making it. Uh, Capable of uh, um, returning for each type sigma uh, 
um, not just a set, but also a metric on that space on that set. In other words, the, the notational semantics of each type is a pair, consisting of a set as usual and a metric on that set. Okay. And that's that's nice because this way, uh, well, the interpretation of any um, computation E is automatically a pay, uh, like a, um, uh, you know, a, a, an element of this um, set X uh, uh, sigma and two elements of this X uh, of this uh, um, set X sigma can be compared by way of mu sigma in a, in a very natural way. This is precisely what we what we want to do at the end of the day, and this works quite well. Uh, this allows you to define uh, a sort of a denotational distance. Which has been carefully and uh, uh, with a lot of depth uh, studied by uh, Marco and uh, his colleagues, um, which uh, can be proved in adequate and completely by the technical sort of composite and the two are synonyms. But that is like a, an observation I want to do. The category of metric space is well known to be symmetric monoidal closed, but not. Closed. What it means, it means that it is naturally a, a, a model of the kind of calculus we have uh, introduced today, which is linear in structure. Uh, the, the symmetric monoidal closed categories are natural models of linear. Uh, on the other hand, it is not at all uh, naturally a model of the um, simply type lambda calculus uh, as we have introduced it in the, in the first lectures. So it is very hard to think about a way of uh, interpreting uh, uh, simply type lambda calculus in metric spaces. So this is like a, a categorical counterpart to the trivialization phenomenon we saw at the beginning of these lectures. Um, you know, the, the metric uh, reasoning about higher order uh, number terms, uh, uh, of, 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 of uh, higher order uh, number calculi, is kind of uh, 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 bound to work only when uh, you have uh, linear types. If you don't have linear types, so when whenever contraction copying can be performed uh, freely, well, things don't work so well. Um, to the point of, uh, you know, uh, you know, making you to realize that uh, something so fundamental as a trivialization uh, theorem uh, actually holds. And there is one, one more thing we want, I want to say about metric reasoning. Metric reasoning has some fundamental limitations. And I want to go back uh, to the very 
uh, first lectures. If you take any of these, uh, um, uh, any of the metrics we have uh, mentioned today, and you try to compute the distance uh, at, the at the level of type uh, real, arrow real, between uh, return, lambda x, uh, x, and return, lambda x, sine x. Do you remember this, uh, this example? This is like an example of an um, approximate program transformation. And you may wonder you know, whether metric reasoning can be helpful, at least in trying to compare these two terms um, and to dub them being not so far away. Since one is substituted with the other, um, you know, in some toy, admittedly, uh, approximate program transformation. And the, the fact is that this distance is thus infinity. Well, because it's uh, the soup uh, or uh, and C and D. And this is, uh, of course, okay, as I as I read uh, it. So no, metric reasoning that is not able um, directly to uh, handle and to take into account uh, um, take this kind of uh, uh, phenomena into account. Which kind of phenomena? The phenomena in which uh, two terms like. Uh, the identity and the sign of trigonometric functions behave very differently for certain inputs and very similarly for other uh, inputs. And I just want to mention that uh, if one wants to justify the program transformation and this program. Go towards matrix on more complicated, more complex compounds. Other words, a metric between X and Y is to have a codomain, which is not necessarily. A number. Maybe a function, okay, or something as rich as a function. And I think it's uh, time to stop. Um, maybe you have collected some curiosities or uh, um, uh, questions in the meantime. I would be happy to answer them. And I thank you for being. Uh, uh, so brave to resist until the very end of this uh, of this course uh, it has been a pleasure please if you have questions i'm here otherwise i will be active on uh, slack until uh, um, until it stays alive <laughs> thank you thank you hugo for uh, your class i want to thank you on behalf of all the organizer for giving this a uh, very nice class. Um, can you stop share your screen yes, so that sure. uh, we can also see you better? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> thanks <laughs> very much. <laughs> uh, yeah. <let's> see. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm quite, uh, do, you, do you see? Him? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Hello, Professor Delago. Do you hear me? Yes. 
Yes, yes, absolutely. Very well. Can you hear me? Yes. C can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, yes, I, I apologize. Yeah. yeah, I apologize. Uh, thank you very much for all the lectures and uh, on yeah, behalf of all the yes, on behalf of all the participants, uh, it, it has been a really uh, a pleasure to follow you in this uh, in this um, in this trip, I will say, and uh, showing us and this different point of view of uh, program uh, equivalence. That is a really difficult topic in, uh, in computer science. So thank you very much. It's been my pleasure. Um, you know, I admit that you know maybe for some of you uh, this is indeed uh, quite a technical and challenging topic. Uh, and you know, if you want any advice on uh, uh, references, uh, introductory papers, or whatever. Uh, I would be very glad to help you. I'm already, I've already uh, posted uh, some uh, some uh, some pointers to the literature on on Slack. Uh, but please, uh, whatever uh, whatever you you need, uh, I try to uh, help you. <laughs>